There we go. And we be live. So good to see everybody's smiling faces this morning. It's great to be alive. Thanks for having me here. I'm so excited to be here today. This is, this is very, very exciting to be able to put all this information out there for everyone. Okay. Well, I'd like to welcome everybody to the presentation on sanitizing safety. And this is in preparation for Child Safety Month. We are talking about hand sanitizer safety. And in today's presentation, we are going to take a deep dive into public awareness on the topics of what in the world is going on with hand sanitizers? What are the active ingredients in hand sanitizer? Overuse of hand sanitizer and risks to children. There are FDA recalls and warnings on alcohol-based sanitizers and there are safer options for the public, especially when it comes to children and safety at schools. So with us today, I'd like to introduce Tasha Jackson, who holds a master's degree in education, and she is a K-12 educator, I believe the eighth grade. So she's doing all the good work for the next generation. Thank you, Tasha, for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. And I'd like to also introduce Jessica Chandler, who is the spokesperson for sanitizingsafety.com. This is a multi-state community awareness group. And I'd also like to introduce- Thank you. Hi. I'd also like to introduce Charles Vest, who's the spokesperson for Glenn Health. And I am honored to be the panel moderator today. So let's get right into it. What in the world is going on with hand sanitizer? Well, this all started in late January, early February of this year. And we all started tracking behavior in response to the global crisis. What we noticed was alcohol-based hand sanitizer sales in impacted parts of the world increased to more than 500%. We then began watching for the World Health Organization and the CDC's guidance. And we saw that they increased alcohol levels in response to the global crisis. When that happened, we knew that this could be detrimental to children because their internal organs are not equipped to handle alcohol. Thus, we were motivated to take action. And there's a published report and some videos for an awareness campaign that are located at sanitizingsafety.com. So, Jessica, if you could tell us, what are the FDA approved ingredients in hand sanitizers? Well, there's currently only three ingredients. We have two of them that are alcohol-based. The first one is isopropyl alcohol. The other one is ethanol alcohol. And the last one that's been around for, oh, I believe 90 years in use is benzalkonium chloride. And we call it BZK to make it easy. Thank you. And Charles, what are these compounds also known for? Uh, well, you know, we've been using these three compounds for a long time, and thanks for having me, by the way. It's great to be with such, such very well-informed folks like you all, and, uh, and I, I'm relatively a rookie at this, only about nine months of a deep dive into this, but mostly because I have four kids and I wanted to know what's going on with these compounds. And so, you know, the three approved compounds that Jessica alluded to, you know, the isopropyl alcohol, you know, that's usually what is used in rubbing alcohol, glass cleaner and antifreeze. I mean, that's pretty much what they were, uh, yeah. what they were created for. 
the ethanol alcohol, that's the one that scares me the most because ethanol and methanol are really similar. I'll be happy to talk about that more in the future, but ethanol is a gasoline and it's also extremely volatile and flammable. And so uh, th those two, although can get the job done, I'm not sure I want those around my kids and you probably don't want them around yours. And then the third, which even though it has the longest uh, name, it is the most safest solution, which is, you know, BZK, benzoconium and uh, chloride. And BZK is the same ingredient that you'll find, like if you look it up, you'll see it's in baby wipes and eye drops. So there's the, an example of how those three active ingredients are utilized in the world. So can you clarify, Charles, does BZK have alcohol in it? No, BZK is actually alcohol free. It is uh, bleach free. It's, it's a non-toxic solution. And that's what's real important when we're talking about children or anyone else. I mean, I don't want toxins on the largest organ of my body, which is my skin, just like everyone else. And so, uh, you know, BZK is more of a, it's a salt based product. And uh, we can talk a little more about that if you want to get into the chemistry of it later. Yeah, it, but for now, if you could talk about what we've seen in the news so far, which is mm -hmm. methanol contamination, and mm -hmm. that's been triggering these do not use warnings. How did, why did this happen? Yeah, it's a great question. And it's something that we all are seeing trickle out to the, through the media more and more. Uh, you know, methanol is a, uh, is a gas. It's a byproduct of gasoline. And what happened is, you know, when there was a, a supply deficit, which happened very quickly, I mean, obviously we couldn't get toilet paper and we also couldn't get the active ingredients for hand sanitizer. It was kind of hand in hand. And, uh, and so when the active ingredients were hard to obtain to make, you know, hand sanitizer that everybody was looking for, a lot of companies around the world started shortcutting. They started, uh, eliminating some of the active ingredients, uh, making them, uh, um, you know, much smaller quantities in their end product. And the one industry that had plenty of uh, alcohol-based solutions was and is the, uh, the oil and gas industry. And so they decided that since they weren't able to supply their products to the airline industry, for instance, they decided that they would be the main supplier for a lot of these uh, methanol and alcohol uh, based solutions. And they promised that they would eliminate the methanol out of the, out of their, you know, main ingredients, thus leaving the byproduct that we can put on our body. <clears throat> the challenge is that uh, very recently, the FDA has been pulling these products from the shelves of stores that we all know about. No, you know, not, it wasn't their fault. They thought they were getting good, good supply of hand sanitizer. But the challenge was that the methanol was showing back up in tests. And methanol is deadly. It doesn't take a lot to uh, be fatal. And so when uh, the FDA starts pulling these products off of shelves uh, on a daily basis, that's when you really need to pay attention to what is in your hand sanitizer. And I would certainly uh, not want anything that has ethanol or methanol, of course, or I, even isopropyl. I don't want any alcohol because I know how, uh, where they come from, where they are originated from. So that's why BZK is so important these days. Thank you for that explanation. Hey, Jessica, uh, mm -hmm. I know that you've got a, a really extensive background in, in natural wellness. Can you explain what methanol contamination can do to a person? Mm. Oh, well, how about just a really, really short, poignant, uh, something to think about? And you know the little teeny tiny travel bottles and stuff? Well, okay, so imagine a shot, just a shot glass, okay, a one ounce shot glass. One third of that shot glass is enough to blind just an adult. Wow. Okay. However, if you have the whole thing, if you have a full shot of methanol, it can kill an adult. Wow. And to think that we are mandating these alcohol-based sanitizers to be utilized on our children. Imagine what little, like, 
kindergarten, preschool grade children are being subjected to, especially with an undeveloped liver. Very, very scary when you consider the toxicity just to adults alone in small amounts. And thank you. And Tasha, you as well have a background in, in holistic wellness. In addition to the methanol contamination, um, have you been noticing other warnings that the FDA has been issuing? Um, so as a parent and as an educator, I've been you know, following along as much as I can. Um, and so what has really alarmed me, and I think Charles had already spoken to this, is that we're seeing lots of FDA recalls and it's often, and sometimes it's daily or multiple times a day. Um, one of the shocking things to me is that if you look at a hand sanitizer before COVID began, it's 60%, maybe 70% as the highest or less. Right now, we're seeing alcohol content as high as 90, 95%, and that's really alarming. So if you think about it in a school context, right, and, and I'll just speak to elementary school first, um, because Jessica kind of hit on kindergartners. So um, I, I have taught uh, K through 12. So, I, um, so in, a, in a smaller kid's classroom, you want to sanitize and you want to disinfect often because there's fingers going in every orifice of a child's face and head, um, plus other places. Um, they're not really well toilet trained. So, you know, you want to cut down the germs as much as possible. And so you see a lot of hand sanitizer um, asking parents to bring in, you know, the gallon size bucket of hand sanitizer to use in the classroom, plus um, Clorox wipes or other types of wipes, um, such as uh, hydrogen peroxide wipes, so that the surfaces can be, you know, disinfected. So now that was before COVID began. After, just imagine now uh, with everyone using all of these disinfecting sprays, so spraying surfaces, plus we're putting it on our skin, um, that overuse is, is alarming to me, but it should be alarming to other people as well, especially other parents. Because again, yes, we were disinfecting and sanitizing at you know, normal rates before, now you're seeing it three to six times per day, depending on the age of those children or the students in the classroom. So that's the younger kids. Uh, for middle school students, um, they are prone to doing things to become drunk or high. Um, my students, um, some of them had a favorite drink called lean, where they would take cough syrup, so an alcohol-based cough syrup, mix it with Sprite and throw gummy bears in it and they would drink it to get drunk. Um, and so I've heard instances where students are consuming alcohol-based hand sanitizer, adding other stuff in it to make it taste good just so that they can drink it to get drunk. And so again, you know, there are all of these different, um, these dangers that, yes, the FDA is recalling hand sanitizer, but there are all of these other dangers that are coming out of it that we also need to be aware of. That's incredible hearing it from a real life uh, example. Thank you for sharing that. What I'd like to also share is that if you go to the FDA's website and you take a look at what the products are being recalled for, and some of them are being packaged in food and beverage containers. To add on to what Tasha just said, mm -hmm. these are things like beer cans, children's food pouches, water bottles, juice bottles, and vodka bottles. And additionally, the FDA has found sanitizers that contain food flavors, such as chocolate or raspberry. That is really alarming. And in addition, there was another contaminant found called 1-propanol, which can suppress the central nervous system. So what we're talking about is if you go into a retail store and you're, you're trusting that quality assurance has been made on a product, you don't know unless you go to the FDA's website and you do a thorough check for that brand and make sure that it's not on that recall list. So Jessica, 
what mm -hmm. we're looking at right now on the screen is the alcohol equivalent of hand sanitizer. This has been explained on your website in the videos on how yes. this. Oh, I just lost you, Denise. Oh, can you? Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, uh, as explained you... on the website. Uh huh. So if, if you could explain a little bit further on the website, uh, there's a video that came to the determination of how the equivalency of alcohol and hand sanitizers, we're only talking about a one ounce bottle. And, and this is something that's easily transported into schools. Do you want to go into that a little bit more? Okay, sure. I'll, I'll give you some information. And again, there's a lot of information on the website too. Um, I'd like to start though with presenting the fact that alcohol is a banned substance in K through 12 schools. So from kindergarten through high school senior year, it's banned. However, they are now mandating these alcohol-based sanitizers to be utilized. The CDC, as, um, as Tasha mentioned, um, previously uh, it was a 60% ethanol alcohol base all right that was being utilized by students staff etc in all the schools and <laughs> um, I mean to give you a few perspectives a 60 percent ethanol alcohol based sanitizer in a one ounce travel size is equal to one shot of 120 proof alcohol. So when you start looking at the isopropyl alcohol, which is another approved substance, that was previously at a 70% recommendation. And that is the equivalent of a 140 proof shot, one ounce shot, okay? Now that you have schools going back in um, and you've got all these different regulations occurring. You have the WHO, the World Health Organization, and the CDC has new recommendations, which my kid, uh, my youngest, is actually being forced to utilize these hand sanitizers as well in California. And they have upped the recommendations that are to be utilized. So we have now your isopropyl alcohol content has gone from 70 to 75%. So now you're getting a 150 proof shot in your one ounce bottle. And the ethanol has gone up by over 20%. That's an 80% recommendation now, an 80% content of this. And that is equal to 160 proof alcohol, 160 proof shot. Can you believe that our kids are being mandated to put this on our skin? We're absorbing everything through our skin. And these kids, you know, even young, even the teenagers, you know, having them being inundated routinely throughout the day because you know that they're going to be going through at least that full sh full one ounce travel bottle if they're having to sanitize as regularly as is being mandated by these schools for safe reopening um, mm -hmm. they're being um, they are having um, I don't even know how to put this politely or nicely other than being subjected to a toxic environment plus very the, very toxic environment plus just from the sanit is from the sanitizer so again you you're putting you're, you're having children in contact with alcohol bleach um hydrogen peroxide you know other chemicals that make up those wipes or any other sprays that they're using so you're creating a chemical cocktail which is becoming increasingly dangerous to children, especially whenever they're subjected to it multiple times a day. Oh, absolutely. And here's the, my last thought with all of this is, again, I'd like to remind everybody, alcohol is a 
banned substance in the schools. So whether it's isopropyl, ethanol, it's, uh, it's still alcohol. You can become intoxicated severely by drinking this. So much so that a, there's actually a study, there's a research report that shows that 35% of the poison control calls were from hand sanitizer ingestion in schools on the campuses. So, um, you know, knowing that there's, you know, the BZK equivalent that's out there that's safe, shouldn't everybody be looking at this? I mean, why are, are the parents and who are, you know, their children, why are they not up in arms going to their schools, to the various districts going, hey, here's a safe alternative. Uh, by the way, why aren't the teachers wanting a safe alternative as well? Um, but thank you just, for that uh, point. And to that point, we've included the poison help number, which is very easy to remember, 1-800-222-1222. So if anybody is watching this presentation, just remember the twos. And if anybody uh, finds a child or an adult that comes into contact, um, whether it's accidental or uh, intentional, which does happen with adults, and actually some, some older children as well, uh, please remember that number, 800-222-1222 for poison help. And here's the good news. Charles is going to take us down a road, which is going to help us explain how BZK works. Do you mind going into that a little bit, Charles? Sure, I'm happy to. And uh, every time I hear, you know, when I was listening to Jessica and Tasha, I... I can tell that their hearts are filled with concern because they know that if you put something on a table and it's a kid that, you know, all the way up to uh, and including, you know, seniors in high school, I have a pencil here on the table. I, I'm going to put it in my mouth accidentally. I'm going to chew on it. I'm going to you know, I mean, it's just kind of a habit that we have that mm -hmm. we find something and we start nibbling on it, and especially kids. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so you think about that, you know, how, is, how, how are we able to protect our kids? They're not taking the hand sanitizer and dipping this pencil in the hand sanitizer and then putting that on the table. That's not happening. And so uh, what we found is that even though it's a little more expensive to make the BZK solution, we made that decision very early on, uh, especially when we saw the need for an alternative. And, uh, and we're very happy to provide this product, even though it may cost 5% more or so. And I think it's worth it. And the reason I think it's worth it is there's three things that, that you get when you are knowing that there's a BZK solution. Number one, it's how it works. It works three different ways. There's, there's a surfactant that is a, a layer that when you apply, let's just say to our hands, the hand sanitizer with BZK, it actually has a thin nano uh, surfactant layer that not only stays on your skin, but it protects your skin against the germs and microbes that are floating around and also the germs and microbes that are on this pencil. For instance, uh, it is like, you know, there's a, I, I've heard the example and I like it and I, and I see it on the screen now, an example of the, the, the spike strips that the police lay out on the highway to, uh, to slow a car down. Well, what's happening when you have this surfactant layer on your skin, our product protects your skin for up to four hours. And so, yes, you want to clean your, your hands regularly. But what about an hour later when you pick up this pencil or use the mouse or whatever? Well, any germs or uh, microbes that come in contact with this, this thin surfactant uh, spike strip that is on your hands, uh, it actually explodes the uh, germs. 
Now, okay, that's a little bit uh, graphic, but that's what happens. And so as these germs come along uh, and they will be all ever present, I would feel very comfortable to know that not only am I killing these germs and, and microbes and other uh, you know, bad things on a, on a, every time I apply it, I also feel very comfortable to know that for the next four hours, the, any germs that come in contact with this strip are being exploded. And I like exploding germs. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> uh, second, secondarily, it's the fact that, you know, with this, this surfactant strip on your hands and having that layer of protection, uh, we also have, you know, the, the secret sauce, if you will, which is, which is called the, the QAC or the quarks uh, of our compound. And to not get too scientific, this is what's giving you that extra layer of safety and protection. Now, when you look at the picture that I see is on the screen here, you see this positive and this negative, you know, symbol. And just like what we have also learned in elementary school, negatives or opposites attract. And so we have a technology that it actually positively charges the molecules that are in our compound so that it is attracted to negative molecules of the surfaces. That's how it attaches to surfaces. That's how it attaches to our body. We are grounded negatively. And so the germs, however, are also attracted to the opposite which the germs are negative and they are attracted to the positiveness of these microns, thus actually making a, um, a magnetic effect of we're not only killing germs, but we're attracting them that are near us so that we can, you know, explode those too in the near, in, 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 on your body. And so those three items are how the BZK works uh, and the mechanism how it works so that you have four hours of protection. Now we also have compound products that we might ask for later that can give you up to 28 days of protection as well on the surfaces, all using the same premise that I've explained, you know, right, you know, these last few minutes. And so that's how it works. There's a lot of uh, science around it. It's been utilized for 90 years. And sometimes when it's right and it's not broke, you don't need to fix it or change it. And that's how it is with BZK. The only difference in a lot of people's eyes is just the cost. And for me, I would pay a few dollars more for my kid's safety, knowing that uh, throughout the day and also as a teacher, I mean, how many times are they going to you know, use hand sanitizer? How many times do you use hand sanitizer, Tasha? You know, if you're, if, well, if and when you are in this type of environment, I'm sure every kid that comes anywhere near you, you're doing another, you know, dose of, of your sanitizer. And, and I wouldn't want it to be alcohol going into my system constantly. Sooner or later, someone is going to test for uh, above the alcohol limit sooner or later because they've been protecting themselves all day long. I mean, a nurse you may do it 30 or 40 times a day. And so let's get them away from the alcohol-based products and really take a look at what BZK has to offer. Mm -hmm. Charles, I would yes. like to, um, since you mentioned that somebody's going to test positive, I actually had a friend of mine tell me just the other day that one of her friends, um, she has to blow on a breathalyzer to start her car Mm -hmm. um, she failed the breathalyzer test. And the thing is, um, they were, she was with a group of people for the whole day and there was no alcohol consumed by anyone. They just used hand sanitizer all day. She failed. She turned up positive. Now, we, we have not talked about this. You and I have not had this discussion, although, you know, I knew that sooner or later that was going to happen. So it doesn't surprise me at all that that's yeah. happening. And, uh, you know, there's so many scenarios 
where you can think about, you know, how are we going to get back to the daily routine of things? And the only way that people are going to feel safe in all of these environments, in their church, in their restaurant, in their grocery store, everywhere, the only way people are going to feel safe is if they feel protected for, from against the germs and viruses that are out there especially since with the cold season coming, although I'm in San Diego and I think you guys are in Vegas and other areas, it's not cold yet, it's getting cold. And so all these activities that we are happily able to do outside, we're going to go inside and start getting in close proximity to each other in a very short order. And so now's the time to stock up and understand the protection you get with a BZK solution. And I'd say it doesn't have to be mine, but we're pretty much the only ones out there that have it in the way that we have it because of the equipment that we have been honing and fine tuning to apply you know, this product and to manufacture these products. We're literally two years ahead of the game. And so uh, I'm very proud of that and, and happy to give more information. You can always go to our site to see that too. Thank you very much. We're going to go into live Q&A, so here we go. And uh, Jessica. Yes. You have an extensive science background. Could you please explain the wet time for alcohol? Oh, yes. Okay, so the wet time for alcohol, um, that is, let me try to make it simple. Um, that is how long alcohol takes to evaporate or it dries on your skin. Alcohol typically evaporates in about 20 seconds. Um, one of the interesting things about that whole 20 second um, wet time is that the WHO and the CDC now recommend a 30 second wet time to disrupt the cell membranes. Um, since, I mean, I have used alcohol um, as for years and years and years in the laboratory and 20 seconds, especially with high content alcohol, um, usually the stuff dries in, in 10 to 15. Um, it's, it doesn't last 20 seconds um, in the higher content stuff. Uh, it's, it's not gonna happen. Um, so what you're saying is with, within the 20 second or 30 second recommendation time frame, that's the efficacy of alcohol-based sanitizers. It yes. dries faster, which means, okay, now I'm no longer protected, which means exactly. I have to keep using it, which means my body keeps absorbing it, which means, you know, yes. it, your skin's the largest organ. As you've already mentioned, there have been cases of blood alcohol content levels that are beyond the legal limit and yeah. nobody's had a drop of alcohol ingested as a cocktail exactly. so that's that's the reality that people are facing now so exactly uh, that's and and, it, and also side note it's also in case anybody remembers or if they've forgotten um, alcohol is actually a flammable substance as well so not only are you rubbing a intoxicating substance on your body you are rubbing a flammable substance on your body or if you're putting it on your clothes i mean yeah i mean which is why i mean i love these gland products because you know they do last four hours some of the stuff um, lasts up to 28 days it's it's practical it's practical it's smart it's an intelligent and it's water based. Kids. Exactly. Exactly. You know, it's water is not kids. flammable. <laughs> no, and it's not toxic. Um, typically, unless, <laughs> but yeah, we can go into that one another time. Um, you know, uh, but you know, it's practical for the kids. It's it's practical for schools, parents, teachers, all these different environments. And on a side note, as a benefit, after you use it, your skin actually can get softer. Wow. So. Mm -hmm. so Tasha, having heard all of this as an educator, what would you recommend to parents? 
Um, I would absolutely recommend to parents to really get educated, to really learn and understand um, exactly how these things are being used in the classroom, how these things are being used throughout the building. Um, in one of the schools that I was working for, I know that they, uh, the teachers are sanitizing three times a day and then they do a deep clean every night with some other chemical. Um, and then, you know, learn, learn not just what are the surfaces, but, you know, as Charles pointed out, you have kids and it doesn't matter what age they are. A lot of times they lose their pencil and they need a pencil. So the teacher provides a pencil. So there's sanitized pencils and then they, what do they do? They put the pencil in their mouth. So then there's an ingestion component and, and parents are not, um, even for myself, before I wasn't even thinking about this. I'm a parent and an educator, right? Um, I hadn't thought about these things before, but as we move through this process and more information becomes available, I become more aware and I can make better choices. And so I would really urge parents and all of my teacher friends to get educated and to go to the school districts and say, hey, there is a safer alternative. We can do this in a better way. We don't understand the long-term effects of this yet, or we don't know the long-term effects of using these things at this time. We want to mitigate that. Please, let's look into other options. And here is another option, which thank you so much, Charles, for sending this to me. I appreciate that. <laughs> so I got my sample in the mail yesterday. Um, you notice how it doesn't dry out your hands when you use yes. it? That really yeah. Cool. And, and, you know, we were speaking, uh, Denise and I were speaking yesterday about, you know, that drying effect. And so alcohol does have a drying effect. So imagine putting that on your hands, you know, before we might, you know, with elementary kids, maybe as they walk into the classroom, when they're getting ready to leave for lunch, you know, maybe one other time throughout the day, but now it's constant, right? So just imagine putting that on your skin multiple times, your hands are going to get dry, hard, cracking. Um, I live in Arizona, so it doesn't get too cold here um, in the Phoenix Valley in the wintertime, but in other places where it gets cold, you add that cold air on top of alcohol. So you have dry cracking hands and they're putting alcohol-based sanitizer on it. And then you know what happens whenever you have a paper cut and you put hand sanitizer with alcohol, it burns. <laughs> it's going to oh burn. Goodness. Yes. So you're just kind of compounding these problems that people are not really thinking of at this time. And again, if we can try to get awareness out there and mitigate these problems for the future and have safer alternatives, of course, that will always be the best choice. I have a, a lady who is telling me her daughter um, has had um, her hands peeling. She wasn't sure what was going on, took her to the doctor because all of a sudden her hands are peeling bad, really, really bad. The doctor said, are you using alcohol-based, are you using alcohol-based hand sanitizer? And the girl was, the daughter was said, yeah, you know, I'm in school, so I have to, you know, rub, use it all the time. He goes, well, that's what the problem is. Mm -hmm. and wow. so yeah and so the mom is like you know what i'd rather you not go to school um yeah. if that's going to be the case yeah yeah so charles any final thoughts and how can people reach you after this broadcast wow well it's been an honor to, to hang out with you ladies uh, i feel very honored and you know when i when i think about all of the products that we have the number one word that comes to my mind is safe. You know, our products are safe. I'm not worried about, you know, an accident of someone overusing our product. You know, if they use our hand sanitizer every five minutes, that's okay. You know, it's like washing your hands every five minutes of just open water. And the other products that we have, for instance, our surface cleaner, when you use a any other type like for instance I, I know i'm kind of marketing it but you know everybody every restaurant every school has these 32 ounce sorry for that they have these 32 ounce bottles and they are they are spraying their services down with this alcohol-based solution and you would think 
that more is better. You would think that if I can put enough alcohol on it, if I can put enough substance on it, then I'm going to kill more germs. And that's, that's really not the case. Every time they wipe, they actually are wiping off that product that they just put on. And so with ours, it actually adds to. And so using our hand sanitizer is great. Now using it in combination with a surface cleaner that actually gives more protection or maybe a laundry aid that actually protects your clothes at the same time for 28 days and with that same mechanism. Germs hit it, they die, they explode. And so we have that, body sprays, wipes, all, we have the full gamut of cleaning solutions for not only your skin, but your surfaces and your environments. We have a spray service that comes in and uh, in 20 minutes, we can completely sanitize, deodorize, and clean the entire home. And just like what I heard about the, how fast alcohol dries, our solution dries super fast as well, 10 minutes and in a dry environment. So there's a lot of different ways that we are helping, but really the word safety is the word that comes to mind. And with this you know, month coming up for child safety, I really want to focus on that and, uh, and feel very comfortable with anyone that has children using any of our products on a daily basis. And, uh, and so you can go to our website, Glenn Health, G-L-A-N-H-E-A-L-T-H, like it sounds, dot com and, and see videos and learn more about data sheets and do a deep dive if you want. And, uh, or you can contact me at charles at glanhealth.com. Thank you very much, Charles, for presenting this information. And Tasha, any final thoughts? And how can people reach you? Sure. Um, first, I want to thank uh, Charles uh, for putting out such a great product that's an alternative. I know, at least in the health and wellness community, and amongst my friends that are more socially conscious, health conscious, they're looking for alternatives, but they don't know where to go. So I really appreciate the message that you're putting out. I appreciate you know you collaborating with me now a couple of times to um, raise awareness, especially that there is an alternative. So I want to say thank you for that. You know, Jessica, thank you so much for your expertise in this area. And um, anyone can reach me. Um, my email is radiantwisdomconsulting at gmail.com, or you can always give me a call at 760-456-7905. Even though I live in the Phoenix Valley, I work out of San Diego, and I often travel. It's probably, I get the longest commuter uh, award. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably where it's at, so... Um, please reach out at any time if anyone has any questions for me. Um, either one of those ways is the way that you can contact me. Thank you. And Jessica, final thoughts and how can people reach you? Yes. Um, sanitizing safety is about sharing this knowledge. We need to pull together as a global community and get these messages out to the world that there are safer paths to, to the sanitizers than what we have been presented and are led to believe by the various media industries. Um, you know, please, you know, share this, you know, go to, you can reach us at sanitizingsafety.com Follow the, um, the links, like the, the posts, share the information with everybody that you know. Share it through social media. Push it out there on all the various platforms because the more people, the more parents, the more schools, the more industries that know that there is a safe and even healthy alternative, mm. the better. Thank you. Okay. Well, it looks like we have sanitizer too. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> looks like we have run out of time. So I'd like to thank all the speakers, Jessica Chandler, Charles Vest, Tasha Jackson. Thank you for presenting an alternative to alcohol-based hand sanitizer. 
and have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Thank Denise. you so much. Thank you for the being able to be a part of this. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Tasha. You're welcome. Thank you, Denise. Thank you. Thank you so much.